you know, you don't have rights. There's no trimming here the way there's trimming out there. My name is Ricardo Rodriguez, and we're in King County Correctional Facility, and I've been here for six months. With the Iva Drill Project, we go to jails in King County every week. We are constantly meeting new inmates and keeping in touch with inmates that we've already met with. When I first met Ricardo, I learned that he'd been infected or punished for hurting himself. I'm bipolar and schizophrenic and I hear voices. I have this diagnosis since I was like 13 or 14. And the voices keep telling me to hurt myself, cut myself, any kind of way I self-harm. The fact is that people in jail attempt self-harm, they attempt suicide. The suicide rate in jails is three times the rate as it is in the community. So most jails have policies in place for responding to inmate self-harm, including the jail where Ricardo is incarcerated. If an inmate either attempts to or does hurt themselves or receive medical treatment, uh, they get transferred to psych housing and they receive monitoring by mental health providers. And unfortunately, at some jails and at this jail, you can also receive a disciplinary infraction for self-harm. I can't control, you know, what's going on in my head, like, or my body, you know, like physically. Like if I bang in my head and I don't stop and then they'll be like, well, we're gonna take you out or we're gonna infract you. Basically, you know, they, they punish you like that too. Like. So this is, this is a list of four different infractions that Ricardo received for self-harm. The first one was in October 2015. He was infected for tearing up his suicide blanket in an attempt to hang himself. So what happened is like, I started hearing all these voices and then I took my smock and I, well not my smock, my blanket, and I tear it up. I was planning, you know, like to put it on the sprinkler. The guard came and was like, well, you know, what are you doing, you know? And that's when they told me to give up, you know, the contraband before I start hanging myself. The list of infractions that infract me was a uh, 203 refusing orders or causing the supervisor to respond. Uh, self mutilation, which is self harm. Possession of contraband, that was the terror blanket. Property damage, you know, like because I destroyed uh, the, the smock or, or the blanket. Ricardo was infected again for self harm on February 2nd for hitting his forehead against his cell door and wall. This time, he received serious infractions number 203, refusing orders or causing supervisor response, and 217, self-mutilation, tattooing, piercing. He was found guilty of both and sentenced to seven days in solitary confinement, where you get one hour out of your cell every other day, and you can receive a bill if any property damage was involved with the self-harm. $52.90. That's what they charged me for that security, security smock that I tear up in a cell for self-harm. They don't understand like how I feel about, you know, what's going through my head. And they're not doctors, they're uh, officers, so they do things in a different way, you know, like they, disciplinary you, they use uh, force on you. So instead of responding with discipline to self-harm, we want the jails to stop disciplining people for self-harm. So we reached out to the jail to find out what their reaction is to Ricardo's story, what their position is on, on this issue, and this is what they said. We agree that there is no benefit in disciplining inmates with serious mental illness who self-harm. We also understand that those in isolation, regardless of degree of mental illness, are emotionally challenged as this environment is not therapeutic. We will therefore continue to work with the AVID Jail Project and evaluate current policies regarding self-harm and property damage specifically for identified inmates with mental illness. Ricardo is still in jail. Um, we keep talking with him and working with him. It affects me in so many ways because I'm alone, I hear voices, I hallucinate, and there's no one you know there to talk to me or help me. And I start, you know, like thinking that nobody cares. It's not fair you know, for them to punish you because you're harming yourself when you already have a problem. Instead of solving the problem, you're creating a lot more problem to it. Follow Ricardo's story and other stories of people with mental illness in jails at avidjailproject.org. Amplifying Voices of Inmates with Disabilities is a project of Disability Rights Washington. Produced by Rooted in Rights.